Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Chelsea Vallarte here at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. Today we're joined by NASA's SpaceX Crew 6 crew who just returned from the International Space Station after having spent 186 days in space. We're joined today by NASA astronaut Steve Bowen who just returned from his fourth space flight. We're also joined by NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg and UAE astronaut Sultan Al Niadi, both of them having just completed their first space flight. Andre Fedyaev is their fourth crewmate. He could not be, be here with us today because he's back home in Russia with his family. So I'm in another room, and then we don't have media in the room with them there today. We would hate for them to get sick right as they just got back to Earth. But we do have media here on the line. So if you have a question, go ahead and press star 1 on your phone on the phone bridge to raise your hand, enter our question queue. But if your question has already been asked, press star two to lower your hand and exit our question queue. We'll also be taking questions from social media using hashtag AskNASA. I've got my phone right here looking for your Ask NASA questions, so be ready for those on social media. So I'm gonna toss it over now to Steve Bowen for some opening remarks. Thank you, it's a, it's a great pleasure and uh... It's fantastic to be back here, and uh, really, I'd, first off, I'd like to thank everybody uh, here at JSC, at NASA, uh, as well as SpaceX uh, for the uh, incredible flight for, on Dragon, both up, back down, and for our relocate, and in addition, all the uh, control centers around the, around the world, you know, Huntsville, Scuba, Munich, Moscow, uh, it's an incredibly integrated team. And uh, we're actually in just a few weeks away from coming up on more than 23 years of continuous presence on board the ISS in low Earth orbit. And uh, just, I was looking at it and trying to get a sense of what that means. It's about a third of the world's population wasn't even born when we first put man on board the ISS. So uh, that's an incredible accomplishment. And we're just very proud and happy to have been a part of, so far, a chain of 69 increments coming up on 70 increments. And, uh, you know, I, I think we, we did our part. I think hopefully we, we kept the change strong, and uh, we'll be able to pass that on to the next increment. And it's been an incredible pleasure uh, for me, after uh, several space flights, uh, to get the opportunity to fly with Woody and Sultan and Andre. And, and uh, really, it's just amazing to watch people in orbit. It's, uh, it's really incredible. And uh, thank you all very, very much. Thanks, Steve. Now let's jump into some questions. We've got some people here on the phone bridge. I'm going to kick it off to Marvin Marshall. He's with Space Report News. Uh, Marvin, go ahead with your question. Uh, looks like Marvin has exited our queue. We'll see if we can get him back. And now go to Elizabeth Howell. Elizabeth is with Space.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I'm glad that you're you're safe. Um, I wanted to ask a question of Sultan. Um, are you able to talk a little bit more about the plans for yourself and also for the UAE Space Agency for the Human Spaceflight Program? Because we really enjoyed your tweet saying space, this is not a goodbye. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Elizabeth. And uh, <clears throat> again, uh, it's really nice to be back and uh, meeting with people, uh, people who supported us throughout the mission. 
Uh, indeed, our uh, program is uh, continuous. Um, it's, um, it was announced to be sustainable from the first day. Uh, my mission is a, a continuation for the space program, um, starting from my uh, colleague Hazal Mansouri, who flew in 2019. This is the second mission. We have uh, astronauts under training that will f they'll finish next year. So it's a continuation of the human space flights, um, and I'm happy actually to be part of it. And the UAE is committed to uh, actually going uh, further into space. And uh, as you may know, uh, UAE has signed the uh, the Artemis Accords, and hopefully we'll get to be part of it in the future. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm really um, uh, happy with the overall uh, performance of. Uh, the, uh, the activity in the UAE, and I, I think it's going to be uh, really, really interesting in the, in the near future. So we're going to flip over to a social media question, and this one is going to be for all of you. Uh, we talked a little bit about food before your mission, but now that you've, you've been to space and back, Tori on X wants to know, what is your favorite food to eat in space? <laughs> uh, I think you know, honestly, the, our favorite food to eat in space is the fresh food we occasionally get when visiting vehicles show up. But on sort of a general, uh, throughout the mission thing, mine changed, you know? Uh, there are certain things I had early on that by the end I didn't want anymore. And uh, toward the end, I think I, had, I think the spaghetti and meat sauce, I think is what we settled on for me. And uh, Woody, what about you? Yeah, uh, my favorite was pretty consistent with macaroni and cheese. <laughs> uh, that was always a special treat when that was available. And but Steve's absolutely right. The variety in food is also really important. And we have an amazing food lab here at JSC that provides just a really amazing range of delicious meals. I was a big fan of making tacos uh, of quite a variety. So all sorts of different uh, filling combinations. And that kept things interesting. Uh, I, I totally agree. We have a big uh, menu. Honestly, we, we bring uh, food from uh, from JAXA, for example, from ESA, we have the standard menu from NASA, and uh, we got to try some uh, Emirati food as yeah. well. We did uh, an Emirati night, actually, when we tried uh, some Emirati food. But honestly, uh, six months is a long duration when you start to uh, feel uh, bored from a specific food. But again, I have a specific, um, uh, I would say, food that I really liked in, right, right until the, uh, the end of the mission, which was uh, a mango salad. <laughs> it, was, it was my favorite throughout the mission. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you to all three of you. Hopping back now over to our phone line, we've got Tanisha Thomas with Spotlight PA. Hi, um, I had a question for Woody. Um, I saw you brought the terrible towel with you, and so I was just wondering how it felt to see your home state from above and also join plenty of other astronauts who are from Pittsburgh uh, in space. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, it was an honor to continue that tra tradition. Um, and yeah, it was really fun. It was uh, I, right from the beginning of getting assigned and realizing it was uh, possible to bring a few small items. I really wanted to bring a terrible towel just as a lifelong Steelers fan. And uh, seeing my hometown from orbit was amazing. It's, it's uh, amazing how quickly the scenery goes by underneath us. But those familiar landmarks uh, that we've seen so many times. I mean, I could see the three rivers just standing out clear as day so many times passing over. So that was really, really fun. All right, Woody, I've got another one for you, but also joined this time with Sultan. We've got a question from Shatadal on X who asks, how does it feel to be in space for the first time? It was amazing. Uh, it's such a dream come true, such a unique life experience. I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity. And it's really wild. I thought a bit about this. Before I flew, obviously, we do a, so much training, and we get ready, and we're really well prepared. But there's still an aspect of uncertainty. It's just impossible to know what it's really going to feel like. And it's just such a kind of profound thing. You, you fly up, you uh, reach second engine cutoff, at that point, you go from about a little over four Gs to weightlessness all of a sudden. And from that moment forward, I was just weightless for six months. So um, it's, it's amazing watching the body adapt. And you very quickly get used to that just being your new norm. In fact, I think in the past week, as we've been back here, it's been really interesting uh, realizing how used to weightlessness I really am and how strange just basic things like walking or trying to jog feel now. But the body uh, adapts so quickly. It's really amazing. 
Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I think I was the first one to get out of the were. seat, and I remember Steve telling me, "You know what to do." I was, I was, <laughs> I, I was uh, asked to bring a, a cabin mic, so I was the first out to get out of the suit. And thanks to the advice that we always get, to, just to take it nice and easy, which I did. And uh, because again, it's subjective. You don't know what's what's going to happen, how your body will react to microgravity. You could uh, definitely be sick if you start moving really quickly and a lot of head movements. So I think I took it nice and easy the first few days and it worked uh, uh, really well. And uh, yeah, six months of uh, weightlessness, it was amazing. It was really, really uh, cool just trying all aspects of uh, physics and uh, trying to uh, just use minimal force to go from one, one, uh, one place to another. And we had some competitions, right? I mean, going from <laughs> right from a, a station forward, trying to float without touching any cables or hitting any walls or anything. So it was really fun just trying weightlessness for the, the, the period of the mission. <laughs> All right, switching over to our phone bridge here with uh, Ben Guarino with Popular Science. Hi, uh, thank you for taking our questions. This is for all of you. I know you're kept very busy, uh, but six months is a long time to be working on a science mission. So what did you do for fun? Did you have a favorite activity while you were off the clock in orbit? Thanks. Uh, I, yeah, I think we, we all had our individual things that you know we, we used to fill that time that was available. Uh, we were really busy. I was commenting earlier that we actually had a lot of, a lot of events and a lot of work to do. and. Uh, you know, so much of what we did, everything is everything's interesting on board. Uh, but when you did have spare time, you know, I I uh, spent more time looking out of the cupola without a camera this time, and uh, sometimes just floating around. And really, I, I really enjoyed just hanging out with the the rest of the crew on board. It's just a fantastic crew to spend time with, and uh, that really, I mean, never I was never ever bored on board. That's for sure. And. Uh, yeah, uh, the the downtime is a fun aspect of the mission. We had a few chess games going on. Uh, we had one, actually, a, a couple games with Mission Control, uh, not only here in Houston but around the world. There were a few chess boards in Mission Control centers, and we were doing one or two moves a day. So that was a, a really fun part of the mission. We also played some games on board, and then I just loved photography. Any chance I got going to either the cupola or what we call the wharf, which is our sort of photo grade window in the nadir portion of the U.S. laboratory. Um, I really enjoyed getting better and better at taking Earth observation photos. Uh, absolutely, I totally agree with you guys. And uh, I think we were lucky enough to have a, a proper uh, uh, division in, ter in terms of the time. So we had the month of science, a month of uh, sure. EVA slash axiom, and then a month of uh, maintenance, and then again a month of EVAs, and then maintenance. It was, it was really uh, nice actually to have this variety of uh, actions going on. But yeah, in the, like in the spare time, definitely going, uh, looking down to Earth and trying to capture that and sharing, honestly, a big part of my mission was just to share everything I do and outreach, uh, talking to students uh, throughout uh, ham radio or uh, direct calls. So uh, again, the engagement of people was uh, a big focus of, uh, of uh, my activities during uh, off time. So Woody, I wanted to go back to this chess game because it leads to one of our social media questions that we got from Charles on Facebook, who wants to know who won the game. I think we we actually came out victorious twice, yeah. uh, which um, it, you know, it's funny. <laughs> I, I'm actually not a particularly good chess player. I really enjoy the game, uh, but we had the whole crew participating from on board, and uh, I think we got lucky a few times. You know, we have the advantage on board of having some continuity of move to move, we kind of know the strategy we're taking, whereas, uh, you know, Mission Control is handing over three shifts a day, so they may come up with an idea one shift, and then the next shift has to has to deal with that and continue executing. So I, I suspect there was some definite chess firepower uh, available on the ground here, and I suspect if we had had a, a third game, we might have had our work very much cut out for us. All right, astronauts win, Mission Control, got to have to try harder next time. We'll go back to our phone bridge here with Mark Corot with Aviation Week and Space Technology. Thanks. Uh, my questions uh, for whomever or um, each of you, you had a, a large, broad science uh, agenda, which is not unusual for the crews, but I just wonder what's your sense of how engaging, satisfying, and motivational it is to pursue all those science and technology uh, projects? 
it's actually it's incredibly engaging and uh, I think we'll all have an answer to this but uh, what surprised me is there's just so much you know you can't get so wrapped up and focused in any one of the uh, the science projects you're working on you really try you you get in there you work ahead of time you study a little bit make sure you understand what you're doing get through the procedure and then right away you're scheduled onto something else which uh, as I said earlier I was never ever bored and uh, it was just the variety is absolutely amazing and and there's so many so much science that goes on that we never actually directly interact with uh, and it's it's just absolutely amazing to be a part of that yeah, uh, it, it was amazing. The variety is incredible. A couple just small examples that stood out for me as, as really interesting. Uh, we had a facility where we were doing some biofabrication. It's called the biofabrication facility. Um, we actually printed the first section of um, meniscus ever printed in space. And uh, that facility is now, it, it actually took kind of some trial and error. There were some setbacks along the way throughout our mission. But by the end, we had successfully printed this meniscus. And uh, that facility is now going on to do some cardiac cells and also blood vessels in the future. So that's going to be really cool. Those are structures that, uh, with the viscosity of the liquids and the um, sedimentation and settling that you would have in, in 1G, you just can't do that on Earth. And so it's kind of a technology demonstration to be able to do these things in weightlessness in low Earth orbit. That was really re rewarding to work on. I remember seeing Sultan working on beating heart cells. That was incredible yeah. um, to see. And uh, we, we worked on uh, one experiment called Capazorb. Yeah. And that one was really fun because it was just the first time that the team was doing it in space. And it was looking at capillary action of uh, fluids moving through small channels. And just seeing the team's excitement at you know, seeing things that weren't that were almost what they expected, but not quite, and, and getting to work with the the team of principal investigators on the ground was was honestly really re rewarding. It uh, there was a, a real excitement uh, working on that payload. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you guys. And uh, uh, honestly, the the best part of it when you see uh, like the reaction from the scientists. Yeah. So you'll be in the headphone, and uh, you're, you're applying some medication, or maybe. Uh, just moving the samples under a microscope and then uh, you even like feel the real excitement seeing a, as you mentioned the heartbeat or a tissue uh, it's it's really amazing and you feel how important uh, the the mission is and why do we go to space and why do we explore because it's a unique environment to give us an insight of, for for tissues for example or any uh, biofabrication or the the effectiveness of, uh, of medication. So it's really uh, amazing, honestly, and humbling to be part of, uh, uh, of uh, such effort and, uh, and the same mission. So it sounds like a whole ton of exciting biology experiments as much as other disciplines as well going on on the space station that you guys got to work on. Um, thank you for your question. I want to go now to David Curley with the Discovery Channel. Yeah, I need a new meniscus. Thank you for doing the experiment. My question is actually for Captain Bowen, uh, you're a senior astronaut. You're, you're, you grew up in the shuttle era. You've now done commercial crew and uh, long duration. Can you express, give us some examples of how those experiences were different and changed, and what do you see it for the next five to ten years in the future uh, for future missions? Thank you. Yeah, and that's a, uh, yeah. I've been privileged to have that opportunity to. Uh, be here long enough to see those transitions and actually work uh, in each of those programs along the way. Uh, the uh, you know the shuttle flights. When I first showed up, uh, we arrived as a class shortly before the first increment launch to the International Space Station, and so the International Space Station was really the the sort of the center of my entire time so far here at NASA, and so I've worked a number of things along the way. So when I first went to the International Space Station on a shuttle flight. You know, I was basically a construction worker, and it was uh, a very short series of missions uh, that you work your way through, and uh, you get really highly trained, and you execute the choreography, and you get it done, and you come home. And that sort of mission, uh, we're seeing that now. Uh, we had Axiom 2 on board while we were up there, and that I looked at that as like, it's a shuttle mission. These guys, they come up here, they're very focused, they have their work to do. Uh, you know, we help support them, help them understand what they don't have time to adjust to. And uh, I think it ends up being a very successful model for that sort of mission. 
so when I first came to station, uh, life on board station was short. And uh, there are certain things I learned. The, uh, the odor of space station was similar to an odor of a submarine. That's not necessarily a good thing. Uh, you get used to it pretty quick. Uh, and so for a long duration mission, it was really interesting for me uh, to sort of witness that transformation from that high intensity short to a much longer, or maybe slightly lower intensity. I still felt it was pretty intense along the way. Uh, but the changes that you see in your body, which these guys really experienced uh, wholly for the first time. I had, you know, I had my markers. I told them before we got there that, you know, as you know, we get past the first couple of weeks, or I'm as much a rookie at this as they are. And it's, it was really amazing to, to have the opportunity to be a part of that. The uh, model that we're using, I think, helps uh, sort of keep that continuous. The things we're learning uh, by having long duration missions, not, not just, uh, you know, for long duration for exploration for NASA, but actually the, we are also subjects of a lot of this science as well as uh, we've been joking that, you know, you, your mission really isn't over until the last sample is taken. And we've got another month or so of, of uh, that to come. But, you know, just being a part of that and that sort of mission. And then I also worked exploration, so I worked part of uh, sort of the Artemis and Orion programs. And that is sort of a different step entirely. And so I think each of these models really has their place going forward. And I'm hoping we're going to continue with these shorter uh, science-based missions, regardless of you know, where that comes from. Uh, you know, we could maybe get back into the business of that at some level. The long duration missions, they're looking at different lengths of increments. Uh, you know, we sort of settled into the 180 days based on need at one point, but we had looked at other increment lengths. And as the uh, opportunities arise, you know, maybe we can look at some of those. And obviously exploration, uh, everything we're doing now in low Earth orbit will help us extend man's uh, reach into further and further into space. And, uh, you know, some of the missions we're looking at, those long durations could be several years, which, uh, other than whaling ships back in the 19th century, uh, we really don't have a, a human model to emulate with. And that's a lot of learning we have to do before we get there. So, uh, yeah, it's been an incredible to watch each of these phases and, and uh, really be a part of it. And it's really exciting to going forward. Uh, it's not five or ten years. I think we're looking at 15 to a 20 to 100 years. Uh, it's great to be able to project that far to the future. It's really exciting. So I want to talk about the spacewalks a little bit. We've got a question from Shannon on X who wants to know, during an EVA or a spacewalk, are there a few seconds incorporated into the schedule for astronauts to embrace the moment and observe space? <laughs> Well, I think I was lucky enough to be uh, in that exact moment where uh, sometimes we have downtime uh, for the team to uh, figure out uh, uh, the next task, for example. So uh, they, we got a very lovely uh, uh, IV, and uh, I think uh, she was, um, Anne McLean, she told me uh, one time, yeah, take five minutes, take, take some pictures. So we, it was really great, yeah, just to have that moment and look down to Earth and seeing... Uh, just nothing. What, what is protecting for you from dying is a, a thin glass, and uh, yeah, just seeing everything crystal clear. So yeah, we do have some time to take some pictures and to, to observe the moment. The moment. Yeah, um, I have to call out the the training we get here at Johnson Space Center at something called the Neutral Buoyancy Lab. It is amazing how well that prepares you um, for being in the suit on orbit. That plus just a few weeks spent in weightlessness. Uh, I was just right at home in the suit, felt super comfortable, and so that kind of allowed me to just hit the ground running straight out the hatch. Um, definitely had that, ta it's hard not to have kind of a task <laughs> focus of wanting to jump right into your activities. Um, for me, it was actually on my second spacewalk right at the end. I think they sent Steve off to go fetch an item, and I happened to be back at the airlock uh, just hanging out for a couple minutes, and uh, so right there at the end, um, I did have some downtime, and I actually turned my helmet lights off and it, we were in the, in the night pass, and oh, so I just sorry. remember looking out at the beautiful space station structure at night, and I, I really, um, I'm really grateful that I took a few minutes there to just enjoy the moment. So we're gonna try Marvin Marshall. I know we had some connectivity issues before, but if you've got your question, uh, Marvin Marshall with Space Report News. 
Hi, my name is Marvin Marshall with the Spaceport News. Yeah, thank, thank you again for coming back. Sorry, that first first try got disconnected there. Uh, welcome back to Earth Crew Six. Uh, you know, we spoke with you guys aboard the International Space Station there and asked if y'all were uh, playing any pranks on each other. Uh, and we were just wondering if you guys wanted to talk about any of those pranks or you know any other memorable times that you guys had up there. Uh, thank you guys again, and it's an honor to talk with such an amazing crew. Welcome home. <laughs> Um, Let's see. We installed some new stowage uh, compartments in the airlock, and uh, I may have ended up inside them after install, <laughs> locked inside, waiting for my you crewmates to locked. let me out. So <laughs> you couldn't get. Well, I think you could. <laughs> the amazing part is he fit. Yeah, I, I do remember that time when uh, actually uh, we, we, we pointed. You, you were in, and then we pointed the camera so the ground uh, team can see it. And <laughs> we opened the, the door, and there you are. I mean, inside the a newly installed uh, panel. So yeah, honestly, every, everything was uh, uh, really nice and, and cool. No, uh, I would say uh, serious or dangerous pranks, That's but uh, yeah, we we do love to joke and maybe compete with each other. We had. Uh, uh, just a, a small night of uh, uh, games. space games. We, we we compete with each other, and uh, uh, it was it was really fun. Just uh, having uh, that uh, capability to play in microgravity. Yeah. So, Sultan, I do have another question from you for you on social media. Abdullah on X says, "My question is for Sultan. How does it feel to be written in the UAE's history pages forever?" Okay, uh, honestly, I don't think of uh, uh, my mission as a something that uh, a record. Uh, records can be uh, broken easily, but the impact, we, I, I would love to think of it as a, uh, a good impact, a good mission. Um, uh, it's really nice to see the youngsters and uh, uh, the community overall just talking about space and why do we go to space, why do, do we do science in space. So to me, that is more important. It's not about a person or a number or a number of days. This is easily can be broken. But when, uh, honestly, I, I want to go back and uh, share the, uh, the experience, share uh, the, uh, whatever I experienced. I want to answer some questions. I know many people asking a lot of questions. I want to give uh, my perspective uh, to uh, my mission. And uh, I wanted to do that even before arrival. So uh, I was engaging with a lot of people, just answering their questions. and speaking the language or the Arabic language and uh, trying to uh, explain everything in a very simple and scientific way. So, yeah, that is the, the most important part of me in, in terms of the, the impact. I, I wouldn't think about numbers. So switching over to Wadi Hoberg, you've got a question uh, from Natalie with the Pittsburgh Tribune. Hi, Natalie. I'm ready for your question. <laughs> Woody. Um, this is for Woody and the rest of the team. Um, after being out in space for six months and uh, seeing Earth and the magnificent of space and everything from a you know, totally different viewpoint, now you come back, did it change your philosophy or your perspective on, you know, on how to live life in the human race? And um, any trips back to Pittsburgh at all, Woody? <laughs> Actually, yeah, I will be back in Pittsburgh in just a few weeks. My little brother still lives there, and uh, I'm looking forward to coming and visiting in not too long. Um, seeing the planet from space is just incredible. The perspective we have, we're, we're in low Earth orbit, so we're actually only uh, about 250 miles above the surface of Earth. Um, Earth is like 8,000 miles in diameter, so we're actually pretty close to Earth still, but we're just high enough to really get that incredible perspective of just how thin the atmosphere is, and uh, it's just kind of right there in your face how precious and fragile this place is. So I definitely, um, as, as somebody who loves the outdoors, I've always felt passionate about protecting this amazing planet we call home, and, and I only feel more, strong, uh, more strongly about that after seeing it from low Earth orbit. Thank you for your question, Natalie. So going back over to social media from Slobodan uh, has a question about the general process of recovery now that you're back on Earth. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? And what is the average recovery time of a crew after being back from the ISS? Yeah, so uh, as I commented earlier, uh, we've really just started our, our recovery. And uh, they, have, they block off about six weeks, and most crew members through the years have commented about six weeks feels like Earth is normal. You know, it feels like 
this is where you've always been, this is where you belong. Sort of like space when we got, it took about six weeks, you know, and maybe a little bit longer for your head space. Uh, but, you know, every, every crew is different, everybody's a little bit different. Um, my adjustment this time has been obviously a little bit different than my uh, shuttle uh, recoveries because I was in space a lot longer and I'm significantly older. So I, my knees are a little stiffer. I probably could have used the meniscus uh, <laughs> before we get back. We did have some doctors on board. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm anticipating feeling pretty, I feel pretty good right now. So uh, we got about six weeks and that's, that's about standard. Uh, how are you guys feeling? Yeah, it's it's wild both both directions. Like Steve said, it's I kind of think of it as a bit a bit of an asymptotic curve. So every day feels a little better, but you know even after one week, I'm maybe 80 or 90 percent is how I feel right now. And I think even after two weeks, I'll probably be feeling close to 100 percent, but still just a little off. And that matched my experience adapting on orbit too. It's pretty profound all the just physical changes in the body. Your vestibular system uh, goes through a lot going from 1G to 0G and then back to 1G. Uh, fluids are shifting in your body because uh, you go from having that kind of gravitational gradient on your blood pressure to not, and now we're back to having that. Um, and it's just, yeah, you really feel it. Um, but it's also amazing how, how after a couple weeks, it just feels like your new normal and you're functioning uh, kind of near that 100% level. So similar question, a bit of a follow on another social media that question that we have from Nish, Nishath. Um, and if you've answered it in its entirety, that's all right. But he is wanting to know if there's any particular striking changes that you noticed after arriving back on Earth. Particularly, are you noticing a change in your taste or the way you've adjusted back to gravity? Well, it felt really, really heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I, I was off the straps, and I remember um, I was the last one to egress the capsule, and I, I did not notice that I was off strap until the recovery team started to, to pull me. And I thought, wow, it, it was only my weight just uh, pressure, pressurizing me towards the seat. So yeah, we, we felt really heavy. The, everything feels really heavy, and even I remember um, Steve handing me uh, a, a bottle, bottle of water, it felt really heavy, like like a ton. <laughs> and I just did not drink it because I, I didn't want to move a lot. So, yeah, and it's amazing how quickly you can uh, get better. It's by the hour. You start uh, moving your, uh, your arms and then starting a little bit standing, moving your legs. And uh, yeah, it's amazing how you do recover. Just like, as you mentioned, guys, um, arriving to space, you adapt really quickly. You come back to Earth, you start to adapt uh, um, quickly as well. It's not easy. You might have uh, some difficulty walking. Uh, you might have uh, uh, motion sickness. But I think, uh, and this is an opportunity to thank everybody in the uh, recovery side, the recovery team, the flight surgeons, and uh, uh, everybody in the rehabilitation uh, facilities to make us get back to normal as quickly as possible. So speaking about this adaptability, Samuel on X wants to know, what did you have to adapt to living in space that we could utilize here on Earth? So general advice for adaptability that we can use. I'm not even sure how to actually answer that because you, you, what sticks out in your brain is the things that were you actually had to change to, to accommodate living in space and uh, things you have to change back when you get here. But things that might impact how I live on Earth um, I, I, I think this may just be me, but uh, I try to be incredibly efficient in my home and elsewhere as far as how I put things away, how I pack things, uh, the ability to find stuff, uh, putting things in their proper location. But that is a habit. Uh, hopefully, I didn't violate it too much on orbit, but I think that's a skill and a habit that you learn you have to know on the ISS. And I think that's something I'll definitely take with me from that. Does anything else? Yeah. Awesome. So that was the last question that we had submitted. I know we've talked a lot today about spacewalks, first space flights, favorite moments, favorite experience. I just wanted to ask one last question to all of you. Is there any last bit of your mission that you want to share with us? Uh, I think that uh, as we get the opportunity to go through uh, the photographs and videos and things that we've uh, that we managed to gather on orbit, those things that will be lo much longer lasting than, uh, you know, than our, than our memories, basically. 
Uh, I think there'll be things that we see and uh, will be big reminders and cues, things that we've missed, you know, things that were significant that we may not have had the opportunity to really think about and discuss. I had mentioned earlier, I was starting to work through the 3,000 or so, 4,000 emails uh, that we got while we were on orbit that I never, and I was amazed at the amount of uh, things that were accomplished during our mission, not necessarily by us, but I still get a lot of the, uh, all the ground uh, emails as well, and so working my way through that, you know, it was just an amazing uh, opportunity to see the team and how much continuous work there was that went into our increment. And there are probably things that we're missing that, uh, that we haven't had a chance to really digest and discuss uh, because there's so many incredible contributions from people on, on Earth, obviously, uh, who, to our mission that we can't even really think about or think uh, at this point, which is unfortunate because uh, it really was an incredible, incredible uh, experience. You guys got anything? Yeah, I just want to recognize uh, Frank Rubio. Absolutely. We, uh, Frank got on orbit expecting to be there for six months, and as uh, many folks probably know, there was an issue with his Soyuz vehicle. There was an unexpected coolant leak on the radiator, and pretty far into his six-month mission, he learned that he would be staying on board for a full year. And actually, Frank, just a, uh, a day or two ago, set the uh, American record for duration of a U.S. astronaut um, living and working in space. So that's. Uh, that's really incredible. Um, Frank was there when we got there. We spent 186 days in space, and Frank was there when we left, and he's still there right now. Uh, that guy's an amazing leader. He happens to be my classmate. He was our, uh, what we call, USOS lead for the time we were on board, and he did a just exceptional job. And his, um, his cosmonaut colleagues, uh, Sergey and Dima, are in exactly the same situation as him, uh, spending a full year in space. So uh, just being, you know, Basically, we had some manifest changes uh, that affected the time we were on board, and being up there experiencing uh, living and working in space with those guys was a real honor, and uh, they're, they're just doing a fantastic job. Yeah, totally agree with you guys, uh, and uh, honestly, I, I, I talk from uh, my point of view, and this is a message to everybody in the region, and specifically in the UAE. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for everybody. Uh, thanks for the help and support. Uh, you might see uh, four astronauts going to space, but honestly, this is not possible without the support of the families, the support of the friends and the, the ground teams. We're not talking about hundreds, we're talking about thousands of people working uh, tirelessly to make this possible. And throughout the six months, we might just uh, work in the, in the morning, work and then go to sleep, but definitely there are people uh, working around the clock to make this possible, to facilitate all the science, uh, all the daily uh, uh, works, uh, the maintenance stuff. So uh, it's, it's a great thing, and uh, coming from uh, a region that uh, missions to, to space were uh, stopped for, for a long duration, I, I'm feeling uh, humbled by this experience. So I would like to say thank you to you too, uh, as well. Thanks to Andre in Russia, if he, he's uh, watching right now. So, uh, and I get to be asked, honestly, um, do you want to go to space again? And I would say definitely I want to go to space. And if I get to travel with you guys again, I would definitely go with you uh, again. So thank you so much. Thanks, Sultan. I want to extend my thanks to all of you, Woody Hoberg, Steve Bowen, and Sultan al Niyadi for joining us here today. And I want to thank everyone on the phone bridge and on social media for sending in their awesome, their awesome questions. Uh, Crew 6, we wish you all the best. Thank you for being here with us today. That concludes our Crew 6 post-landing news conference. Thank you for joining.